Hello everybody, um, just doing this uh, Blood Bowl Super League. I'm only doing the intro because I'm going to try hard, so I shall get rid of myself. And in the booth we've got Purple Chest and Skurameso to take over. Um, it's my first game against Andy Davo. He has gone with a, the kind of standard tabletop um, formation, really, of uh, three blitzers with Blodge, a block Witch Elf, a Wrestle Witch Elf, and a Dodge Runner. That's very standard. I think that's what KFOG always runs. Um, I've gone for probably the standard dwarf build, I guess, right? A block runner to, to guard against dancers, a couple of guards on the blitzers, uh, a couple of guards on the long beards, and a mighty blow tackler to beat people up. Um, so yes, I'll hand you over to those two, and I shall try hard. Goodbye, enjoy the game. Tschüss. Hello, everyone. Blood Bulls Super League. I can't say it with a straight face, PC. I really can't. Blood Bulls Super League is kicking off. Uh, first matchup for the uh, creator, I guess. Uh, <laughs> Jimmy Fantastic taking on Arch Nemesis Andy Davo. Should be a wild game. Really, really should be. Uh, I'm Purple Chess. Thank you, Skuro. Lovely intro, as always. Uh, two fantastic Blood Bowl coaches here. As Jimmy said, two not unstandard NAF rosters here. Uh, very often on the Dark Elves, you might see a leader runner as opposed to the Dodge runner. Uh, that's perhaps the only big debate there. And sometimes a fourth blitzer instead of a second witch. Um, at the same time, on Jimmy's team, very much the dwarf build he stole from me. Um, some dwarf coaches go six guards. Uh, some go five with a mighty blow. I like a block runner. I think it's a nice uh, defensive piece, as much as help on the ball carrying. I think it's quite good for sweeping around at the back of a defensive drive uh, because if something breaks through, I want to hit it with block. I think hitting an elf with wrestle often just means they stand up, take the ball and sod off. Uh, whereas hitting it with block, better chance of getting it down and staying on your feet and getting the ball away afterwards. But these certainly not untypical NAF teams. Coaching in only a minute, so that's going to be a key test of both of them. Um, and of course, a rivalry to last the ages, these two very experienced streamers. <laughs> The Blood Bowl Streamer League, Blood Bowl Super League, uh, whatever you want to say, certainly it's uh, it's bringing us some uh, interesting and fun combinations. Absolutely. So we've got uh, we've got Jimmy carrying a bench there. Um, probably, maybe, maybe if uh, if he had his uh, druthers, uh, Andy would prefer to have a bench against dwarves than not. But I gotta say, Andy's best known in the tabletop scene for playing Dark Elves. Probably, I won't say more in his comfort zone because it's not like Jim's never played dwarves in his life. Nope. <laughs> no, but, I think these uh, are really you know, extremely good with. Uh, yeah. And he's not going to have been happy to have dropped into a group with, with uh, three dwarf teams and a chaos dwarf team. Uh, he's famously not a big fan of playing against dwarves. Um, mm -hmm. Dark Elves really don't often try and turn dwarves over. They're much more about scoring on their drive and then uh, preventing elf walling in front of your drive. I wonder if that's what we're going to see here today. Very interesting. We will see. Uh, I think you're getting a little bit crackly. You might want to just uh, unplug, Wait. replug the mic there. Yeah, we got, we got it, Billy. Thanks. Okay, let me know how that goes. Uh, we have done the replug thing. Yeah, sounds. I think sounds better off the off the rip there. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> the first of probably many armor breaks on the dwarves. Blocks on the LOS, just getting the stun. But the whole LOS yeah, I'm not is sure. down. Yeah, I'm not sure people really mind uh, stuns on the LOS. Very hard to get dwarves away from marking. Um, yeah. and I mean, at least they're still in the game. Really, it's dwarf removals you don't want. You know, with AV9, thick skull, and a total lack of speed, it's staying on the pitch, getting knocked down, and eventually getting up again. That's what dwarves are good at. This could get the witch into a little bit of trouble here, but nothing she can't get out of. And yep, there it is, knocked down right off the bat. And two plus away from not that. Yep. A little bit surprised we didn't see him try and nail that uh, mighty blow piece down, but it does, of course, mean it's a go for it if he wants to hit with it. And double marking the line dwarf that's been knocked over, meaning it can't stand up and give an assist. And if it does stand up, instantly under threat. Some uh, some really nice opening play from Andy here. But as you said, this is a matchup he's very used to playing yeah. on tabletop, where he is extremely experienced, has been very highly rated on that in the past. Uh, and perhaps when people play tabletop again, he will be again. 
And you know, I was just checking Twitch too. I didn't I I didn't think he was streaming, but he is. I was going to say if he wasn't streaming, uh, I think they, you know, from whatever from everything I've heard about him in the tabletop scene, he's just a different player when he's not streaming versus when he is. And uh, that's uh <clears throat> that's something I, I want to see. That's something I want to see someday. Yeah. You know, I want to see his play when he doesn't have his audience in front of him, kind of yeah, distracting. I'm not someone that will ever underrate Andy Dabo. I know him to be an absolute top quality coach, and uh, I think Zunk's probably on the comms duty there. I don't know how much Andy is going to be you know, yeah, focusing that's fair. on the game. That's fair. And I've always said I think when Andy brings his full focus, he's the match of anyone in BB2. Uh, very often, I think, sadly, he sometimes doesn't. He prioritizes having fun and, and you know, chatting with his community, which is obviously you know, the streamer's choice. I mean, that's part. Uh, yeah, that's just part of his brand, and that's part of his, yeah. uh, what he does as a streamer. And nothing, nothing wrong against it. But like, I, I agree. I mean, I, I, I always started watching his streams because he was a really, really good coach. Uh, and to hear a lot of crusty old tabletop vets talk talk about him as even better than that, I'm curious. I've always been kind of curious to see that play. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, a nice yeah, wide if, shape with the witches defended. Uh, plenty of dwarves getting up and putting threat on those dark elves. But of course, AV8 can take your punch. Yeah, and if Will folks, you if you're wondering why I'm uh, grasping at Jimmy straws Dwarf right now to uh, fill fill <laughs> fill dead air, it's because Jim is playing dwarves. He's gonna get one hit around for a while <laughs> right now, <laughs> and he's just gonna move up and force some two pluses. <laughs> like, there's not yeah. much more to talk about with this uh, defense right now. Yeah, I mean, it's it, people will say base, 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 and uh, to some degree that is the plan here. Uh, you'll notice that Jimmy's trying to put a uh, tackle on all of the bludge elves where he yep. can, try and force those two pluses, try and suck the rerolls away. You know, uh, Del uh, Delphs don't build that big in now. It's an 11 man roster, it only gets two rerolls. Uh, that way, it does come with an apothecary. Uh, but those two rerolls do mean that, you know, every dodge that's a, a two plus, if you're making three or four of those in a turn, sometimes you're going to have to let one go. And if it's early in the turn, it leaves the dwarves a lot of hitting back. Absolutely. And yeah, it, just like you said, you know, it's easy to kind of denigrate the Herp Derp base, base, base. It is a meme here. But uh, this is really, it is really intelligent basing looking at his front. You know, he's got guard, guard against uh, a single, uh, you know, a single dwarf lineman pretty much across the board. And yeah, here you go. He's going to force all those two pluses. And if one of them fails, Davo's not re-rolling it. You know, he's not going to re-roll this lineman. Not at this point. So that's a free, that's a free armor break. And this is what's heartbreaking is you know you've put the right threat in in the right places and yet three two pluses are probably going to go by absolutely without a single need to re-roll them yeah but you know what if one fail you know if one fails across three turns that's one block you weren't getting so it's mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with it interesting there andy taking the very early pass off to the runner just to put it on a, a move seven piece and a piece he's yeah. definitely not going to want uh, under any threat because of its AV7. Like the Witch is a useful tool, but has to be kept defended. Not going to see, uh, not going to see any, uh, any showboating passing here from Davo, but yeah, uh, it was, it was interesting. Um, uh, Jimmy's got some transfer. interesting choices here on his right, on the left, as we're looking from behind the Delves. Oh, you're behind the Dwarves. Okay. Um, he, he, I mean, he could move the uh, bring the Slayer back to get that lineman pushed back away from being a scoring threat. Yep. He could hit with the Mighty Blow on the Blodge Blitzer, or he can even push up through the uh, the lineman that's three spaces behind him and slightly cut those two off from the rest of the team. Uh, I wouldn't hate any of those options. We have famously seen Davo get his team cut off by a lot less. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, he's taking even the fourth choice, which is hitting the lineman up on the line of scrimmage. But again, I think this is trying to cut the team in half a bit. Brian puts some yeah. threat maybe on that witch, which I'd like to see. Is he going to send anyone through that hole? I don't think he is. No, it doesn't no, look like he, it. You know, he plugged the hole, in fact. Yeah. <clears throat> and I think we're going to see a similar turn to last turn. One hit, a couple two pluses away. Andy doesn't need to advance. No, very much the, uh, the the given meta for Dark Elves is not to try and score early, but just to out-position, out-maneuver, and try and push through and score as late as you possibly can. Oh, I I was about to say, this is nice by Andy setting up uh, multiple hits uh, over on the left there, but he's not. He's just taking the one. He's going to stay based. 
I yeah. wasn't expecting that. I thought he was going to blitz he, through with he, the witch and then yeah, take two Yeah, he may well blitz the blitzer off. Yeah. Uh, but doing it with a witch obviously has some frenzy yeah. trap implications. Yep, as we're seeing right... Oh, no, not a frenzy no, trap no, there. It's, and it's he gets two and two, anyway. but then the witch has yeah. to, again, if it's a first pal. Yep. She's got a 1 in 36 away from the runner, but the ball's nice and deep. So, yeah, actually, that was the exact thing I was thinking of just in, uh, in reverse <laughs> of how I was thinking of it. And uh, yeah, I think we'll now see him pull off this um, this Slayer and try and screen that witch as a possible scoring outlet. I can see him scoring in turn five, or maybe, I mean, six would be even better. Leaving Dwarves three turns does give you a chance to maybe turn them over. Um, yeah, I, I guess I don't know how aggressive Andy gets in NAF style with, with Delves. I, I wouldn't want to be scoring early if I could help it. Um, and he's not really under pressure. Ooh, adding a GFI into this gets there uh but yeah he's got three you know he's got three or four dwarves basically on the opposite end of the pitch right now and there's that yep. one dodge against tackle gets the free armor roll does nothing yeah it takes it jim has a surf here if he wants it. jim does have a surf if he wants it, it it's going to take three dwarves to do though yeah and take him uh, across on the wrong side of the pitch i don't think yeah he's gonna take it. which would only i mean it would remove one delf and keep another one there but it, it does leave him very short on the other side yeah, I agree, Coffee. Total trap. I wouldn't mind seeing this witch hit, the advanced witch. Yeah, I think that's fine. Those two dwarves can tie up those two players. Yeah. We can still put yep. this uh, lineman on the edge or knocked over, either of which is great. I would actually prefer to push him twice and get the second one, get a power on the second one. Love that blitzer into midfield. That's a really strong move. Just because what you're really fearing here is not just the elves scoring quickly, but then pushing enough elves through to hole up and be defending a, a sort of a bunker on your touchdown line, which is where they really want to be if they can get that. I think Jim wants to, yeah, Jim wants to hit that witch. Yeah. It's going to be GFIs, though. Oof. Yeah, I, if, I think if he did, he'd have moved the runner there as the assist. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But then who's so he hitting? I think actually he's going to hit lineman? the lineman between yeah. the witch and the ball carrier. Yeah, yeah. And just settle for saying if the witch scores, the witch scores, yeah. but not bringing the whole team through here. Yeah, he just back. Yeah, you can see he just backed yeah. off that runner there. Yeah. Yeah, he centralized it instead. That is the blitz he's gone for. Gets his pow, and now absolutely, it's. Oh, I really thought he'd advance there. Just to limit that forward movement. He's got to really like. Oh, there you go. There's the first cast. Mm -hmm. I think we'll see the apo nice. going on that. Is it? It's a BH, yeah. I'd be amazed yeah. if we don't see the yeah. Apo go in there. And he's right back in. But uh, nice time for a bolt down there for the Slayer. Mm -hmm. Doesn't lose a square, so he can get more relevant next turn. Yep. And that, that beard is placed in a lovely spot to stop that Blodge Blitzer getting anywhere particularly useful. And the Slayer staying where it is really helps with that too. He is pushing forwards with the ball. And as I said, I think that beard should have advanced after the Blitz. It just limited these, this movement a little tiny bit more. Uh, was not really where he stopped helping him get backwards. Just needs this, one dodge to close this. This to me does sure seem like Andy is not going to be able to do an eight-turn stall here. He's no. going to run out of run out of real estate and have to score. In fact, with the dodge blitzer and the witch, he doesn't even need a dodge. He can close the back door here just by running the blitzer down. Okay, uses the witch for that. Perhaps the blitzer is blitzing something. There's a nice angle here where he can blitz and push the other blitzer off, maybe, but... Perhaps not. Ooh, a little cheeky go for it there. I think that's about uh, worrying about the, the screening pieces being hit and not having any responsiveness back. Yeah, that is the blitz I was thinking, but it, it's just going to move it. That actually makes it slightly more threatening, but I still think Andy's got this score if he wants it. It's a strange place to put that blitzer. It stops the downed elf being able to dodge out and become useful and relevant. And oh, another chip there. That's a big there you one go. for Jimmy. Absolutely. That's the two what plus he was looking not for through. here. And now things are going to start to get really tight for Davo. Every hit, scary. Yeah, very, very tough to stop him scoring here, but uh, already down yeah. to a maximum of 10. And probably Jimmy is looking at having four turns to try <laughs> and drive back for 1-1 one, one at the break. half. Which is why we're seeing that Slayer centralized at the rear of this position. Again, just trying to stop that stall out. 
make the ball go in next turn. I mean, obviously put it under threat and hope for the one in uh, one in 36, but oh, doesn't get it. That means he's going to have to put a, a guard in around that piece. One, two, three, four, which is a single go for it. He'll still do that. Yeah, puts the blitzer in there. Absolutely. Now the guard goes in next to it and presumably the runner down the front. Oof. I think the runner could have been another square or two there, the other side of the witch. The advantage there is that the witch, if it does try and manufacture a hit on it, obviously it's on the guard for uh, for both. Two squares in front it wouldn't be. It would be a, a minus two into a one, so it's an assist there could have solved that. And where it is also swaps, stops any, any nonsense about side swapping. There's the go for it. Yeah, I don't see there any reasonable way in which Devo stalls here. I mean, there's three two pluses, four two pluses. You could build a stallable cage for one more turn, but that's a yeah. lot of two pluses for one more turn's gain. I don't think it's we'll see that. Yeah, it's asking a lot of a coach who just just lost a player on a two yeah. plus. <laughs> yeah, it absolutely is. Davo's certainly not getting the luck so far in this game. That said, he's you know he has found the space which elves can usually do against dwarves. Gets down the edge, and there's the one nil. A nice drive, but at some cost, Apothecary gone and one of his Blodge Blitzers down. Yeah, the uh, the Dwarf Tide was just kind of rolling down him there. He had to, really no choice but just to take the easiest touchdown that he could get out of that turn and start praying to slow the Dwarves down, maybe get some, uh, maybe get a good kickoff result, good kick, yep. and uh, keep this 1-0 uh, Yeah, the Kowski, as I said at the start, I think what we're going to see is just uh, now 16 turns, no, what's left, 12 turns of the Elves trying to Elf wall in front of this Dwarf Drive. Uh, absolutely settling for the 1-0 unless there's an obvious turnover chance. And uh, if necessary, even taking the draw. Draw's not a terrible result nope. here um, for either coach starting off the season, you know, starting off the league. But, you know, when you can get a win, you want to win. Absolutely. The key part of Davo's plan here will be to stop this drive scoring no matter what resources it takes stop this drive scoring because if the dwarves score in three or four turns on, yeah. on the second half and the elves get the ball in hand even with four elves left they're not going to mind that they can do the withdrawn offense they can try and push down an edge there's all sorts of ways they can do that and the dwarves very unlucky to take the ball back and get the 2-1 so as yeah. long as he stops in this half Davo's in a great position at half time So obviously, we see both runners on the pitch here. One in an advanced position as a possible handoff option. It does need to happen quickly. And then the block piece nice and deep. This is a good setup from the Dwarves. It's also the anti-blitz defense with the chevrons away from the offset line of scrimmage. Meaning in a blitz result, there's, there's no easy way through that line. And sacrificing slightly the hits on those three line of scrimmage. Um, oh, well. It is a blitz, so let's see super, how this blitz defense holds yeah. up. Super deep kick blitz that doesn't... If it goes out for a touchback, <sighs> yeah. Jim's in business here, but uh, I think I think Davo's not going to push Is it even it worth in. coming for? No, it just it take a just hit on worth, something. I mean, hitting the Slayer out the way and yeah. using a blodge piece to dodge through the runner just in case of a mid midfield, a misfield, but I, I don't think we're going to see much more commitment than that. It's just so tempting because if that ball does not go out, and the chances are it won't go out, yeah. um, Davo would love to be in the backfield, but it's it's probably asking too much of his team down a player. Yeah, this is a beautiful anti-blitz setup that, that Jimmy's used. Yep. Absolutely classic uh, yeah. anti-blitz strategy. It's the way you yeah, lose the game. So. If this pals, I do think there is a way through past the runner with a blodge piece. Oh, he's going with the witch. Okay, I think we're going to see uh, the witch after this dodge through. Yeah, I think so. Oh, and she is uh, not going to go further. So, yeah. Oh, boy. He's doing all the hard dodges here. This will piss this will piss Jim off a bit if this all works out. Oh. No, you say that. Oh, yeah. Those are the three pluses. These are the uh, the three, three pluses again past that blitz. I personally would have liked to see that blitz and, uh, and beard reversed. Oh, and it does. He gets through, doesn't commit a reroll either. And now Jim has to pray yeah. for a touchback here. Absolutely. Even that doesn't solve all of his problems. Uh, there's a stability hold just behind the line of scrimmage dwarves, but 
No and he gets else. the touchback. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good result for Jimmy there. He'll be very happy to see that. <clears throat> what looked problematic suddenly looked all right. Yeah, Jim really needed to get tackle across the entire pitch there, guys. <laughs> I mean, just that uh, that that blitzer and that long beard on the edge where the witch and the blitzer came through. Uh, I, I think reversing those two would have made it much harder to slip around that edge. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. I mean, I know that the blitz is right on the edges is a nice responsive formation. I use it a lot myself, but it's just slightly weakens that anti-blitz defense, which was still lovely from Jim. You can't stop elves coming through if they really choose to. You know, three pluses is about all you can hope for. But having tackle on them does make, may make it a little easier. Okay, so he is trying to stabilize where I predicted. Um, I mean, this is not difficult to find ways. Here we go. He's going to stabilize the cage first. Then take his hits. Is he going to risk pushing that beard forwards as an advance guard? I, why isn't the Slayer stood up? These are the questions I have. <laughs> oh! I mean, the answer is time, of course. Yeah. Yeah, uh, something we did not touch upon, if you haven't looked down in the bottom right of your screen, we are using Blitz Pit rules in this one. That's one minute turns. Uh, that greatly compresses your ability to come up with the perfect strategy. Uh, and in a lot of ways, when you look at what has uh, unfolded in this first half thus far, really impressive on both coaches, really playing playing pretty much uh, – perfectly might be the wrong word, but it's pretty damn close to what you'd expect out of these teams. Sure. Under I mean, under five minute turns, let alone one minute turns. That beard closing the cage, that Slayer standing up, you know, those could have been done first. Yeah, um, but it, it, they, neither was terrible not to. He put most of the defense in place. It was still very solid before he, uh, you know, he moved those two pieces. And in this sort of speed, very very forgivable to do them later in the turn, but but not the perfect turn ordering. Um, oh, that oh, runner oh, running backwards, I, I don't love. It's all about trapping that witch and not about yeah. moving forwards for a possible score. Um, I'd have tried to push it deeper up into the field just to give Davo something else to worry about this rather than threatening this uh, this cage. Ooh. And he gets dubs of his own there. They traded him off this turn, but able to knock this uh, long beard up yeah. for a follow-up hit. Yeah, I think that was the time to take it. The problem now is that you know, it's now a blockless hit on this uh, mighty blow beard. If this goes one in nine, it's it's very very bad. Yeah. I'd be surprised if we didn't see the middle one stand up first. Oh, well, be surprised oh, okay. because he's yeah he's still yeah. on his back there, but he does get the pow. And now the Slayer is going to take a hit as well. Yeah, and, uh, and that's uh, good amount of dwarves now. on their backs to start. Uh, Turn six for Jimmy. That's not what you want when you're trying to. Now, push absolutely, for a yeah, four that turn lineup score. now has to pick, yeah, move up and move slightly deeper just to reinforce this walling. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we have a full on frenzy trap. Now, that, the unmoved lineman in front of the cage, one step back is slightly stronger than where it is. I wonder if we'll see that move. And the witch there staying just around the back where it's threatening without being under threat itself. Putting a little more pressure on, on Jimmy to have to stay yeah. kind of near that team because he can't break off to the right sideline a little bit through those two players. It's going to be hard for Jim to advance at all here. Yes. I mean, there is a route up through all of those line elves, to be honest. Yeah, yeah there the sure is. That he should move a space back. If he puts a, a guard piece on that, then you can hit that and then put the uh, assistant in front of the Slayer. And there are ways to push up, but it, it does mean you're going to have a very based cage. Yes. So here's the real test. Does Jimmy want to score, or is he going to accept 1-0 in the second half? He is doing that move. He is doing that blitz. Is he going to have the, frankly, should spar? Oh, no, he's pushing it off the Slayer. Yeah, I was going to say, shouldn't he hit the other elf yes. there? Because the Slayer can, at minimum, frenzy trap itself to get a hole punched. Yeah, and that's block into no yeah. block. So it's two die yeah. into two reds. But again, it's yeah. block versus no block. So it's yep. not terrible. 
Yeah, he just, but no, he's just taking the single square, consolidating in, keeping the ball safe, and yeah. not a based cage. No, I mean, it's much safer. The problem with this is that it's incredibly easy to stop Jimmy having any shot at scoring here. Yeah. He just I mean, needs some elf walls in front of it. He's got yep. two free elves to start it with. Uh, even the witch can come back and get involved in it if he chooses. So it, it, it doesn't look hard to stop Jimmy here. And then a couple of two pluses away, and it's uh, it's sorted. And at some point too, Jim's got to look at it, and uh, you know that you know you got a you got a witch elf lurking down in the bottom of the uh, bottom of the screen there. Jim really can't push too hard to try and score because it'll become more likely the elves will counter score. <laughs> oh, it's a lovely move from Devo here, using that Slayer as a fulcrum. Oh, doesn't get it. Yeah. Trying to use the power there to push another elf clear and have three elves ready for his screening. Now, that sort of one in nine doesn't end the turn, but it does put him under a lot of threat, and hence we're seeing that witch pull back into the defense as well. Yeah. A lot of two pluses here to get this save suddenly. Uh, and I don't think any of them have inbuilt rerolls. I think Jimmy's put guard on every, uh, put tackle on everything. Yeah, I think you're right. I'm Even the blitzer that, that is uh, on Jimmy's left, my right as I'm looking from behind the delves. Uh, the only thing that the blitzer's touching that isn't also on a guard, it, it doesn't have dodge. So everything here is a two plus. Can be pretty backbreaking when they all work, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is how you break a dwarf's heart. Is have six two pluses to do and do every single one without a fail or a reroll. Yeah, it's enough to make you weep. Oh, he does get one of them though. Okay. That gives Jim uh, extra hits on elves, but yeah, it's going to be. It's yeah, asking it's... a lot for him to score right now. I mean, there's a route through, but it's. It, it yeah. needs pals. Now that being said, Davo did kill his uh, his uh, his uh, scoring threat himself <clears throat> by moving the witch yep. elf out. So yep. I mean, why not try? We can take the chance here. <laughs> yeah. The question is, how does he maneuver that chance? He's going to go try and go up around the outside. He's buffalo girling it. <laughs> Thank you, Skuro. You're probably the only person old enough to get that reference when I make it. Everyone else just says, "What do you mean, you racist?" <laughs> And, he, and uh, Jimmy is now in range. Two go for it, though. And he needs a single push to get him out of range. And he fails with the Blitzer also trying to get into range, as well as be part of the shield. It does, though. Now he's got two genuine scoring threats. But very hard to see what else is going to come with it and close this back door. Yeah. Trying to be a lot more serious in my columns, I could say he's leaving his, leaving his back door swinging open, <laughs> and he's not even risking it. I, yeah, I think the runner's going to come late and try to go for it to try and help out. Yeah, I think so. But uh, always worth taking a couple of hits before you go that are, you know, very, very unlikely to fail. See if you can make sexy things happen. Two and one here. Yeah, I was amazed they didn't push that the other way, which would have given the Slayer a two into two. This is a two into one. Oh, no, it's not. No, it's not. There's there. Yeah, there's guard there. There's guard there. But it does leave two dodge pieces, the one he's just hit, and the Witch, both only on a Slayer. One in 36 to get away. And then he's kept a reroll back, ready to try and elf wall in front of this ball. I think we'll see him knock the Blitzer over and just elf wall in front of the runner. Yeah, the other one trying to get into range as well. Didn't manage it. There is, of course, a route into the back of the ball. But it's uh, it's not that easy to get. I'm not sure there's any point in it. I think you just hit the blitzer here and wall up in front of this runner. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, Luke, absolutely. He was just putting, yeah, you know, three pieces in range is better than two pieces in range. <laughs> Um, I think that was the only plan there. I would have done exactly the same. Um, worth the risk at that point. And as we've said, the, the, the Delves really don't have a scoring option. So at this point, even if you get knocked over with the ball, as long as you've still got one thing in range, there's something you can try. All right. 
<clears throat> excuse me, the two most important two two pluses uh, came through for him there. Here comes the Witch Blitz. Yeah. Just pushes. Oh, I didn't like this angle. Yeah, I don't, and that's why. Yeah. All sorts of trouble here. He does have a reroll. Doesn't use it. Yeah, he wants that like for that a dodge. Dodges to get more didn't people like there. Didn't like that at all. I feel like um, there's a pretty easy way to get this. Uh, yeah, there really is. Yeah. <laughs> this blitz are even closer to the end zone. I mean, getting the ball to it's a different matter, but you know, yeah. one problem at a time. Um, I mean, I'd have used the witch as the assistant hit with the blitzer to at least push the the dwarf yeah. blitzer out of range. Well, everything the only failed thing I'm there. I'm worried about is the runner. That's a very odd route. I think that's down to time. Yeah, maybe. There were better pieces that could have come. The one over on the uh, the far side was just a two plus instead of a three plus. Though it was a, a natural snake, so anything was failing there. Right, Jim's got a shot here. I don't hate the uh, the blitzer moving the witch. Um, that's possible with two assists. Well, he could there. also chain. He could chain that runner and then take the hit with the blitzer just to clear the route. He's going to ultimately end up relying on having to get that runner down, but then, um, there, then there's a the route up put, the sideline. I think if you put two guys next to the runner, you can, uh, right. you've can. you got three assists minus two. The blitzer can push the witch off the runner into one of those two dwarves you've placed there, and then the runner's just got to blitz the, uh, the dark elf runner. Okay, he is going for that. Yep. Yeah, I'm not sure this is the way. Ooh, gets the removal the on the witch, though. That's nice. Yeah, opens up a square there. Oh, God. Three seconds, Jim. This could be a disaster. All right. He gets the pow, so he's just got to make sure he clicks in time. Oh, amateur not turning off cinematics for Blitz Pit competition with one second on the board. Two plus, two plus. He's got it. Jim He's has scored. It. What a comeback there in the last two turns. Okay, that worked nicely then. Yeah. That could have gone completely wrong for him, mm -hmm. but ended up pretty nice. Yeah, it did not look good for the Dwarves to score on turn, you know, six and seven, but nice little turnaround by Jim. And Davo had a lot of things fail on that last push to try and get in front of the dwarves. Yeah, he really did. Not taking that blitzer down, I thought, was very, very uh, ruined, uh, very, very difficult for him. Yeah, uh, I understood Davo why knows he wanted it. Four dice, but yeah, yeah, I thought walling up in front of it and pushing it backwards towards the runner was a better play um, because then it wasn't in range and we could have left it off all of the elves, and I thought that would have been stronger. Yeah, Davo and chat to Jimmy just now. If you're not watching Jim's uh, Jim's feed, was uh, <laughs> nicely done. My turn eight was garbage. <laughs> yeah, I, I think a lot of that wasn't his fault, though. He didn't yeah. get any dice to get where he wanted. No, he didn't. But yeah, he I made mean, some I, questionable I decisions. Garbage. I still think that's a you know a play that against a lot of people would have worked, and with a lot yeah. of other dice could have worked. Yeah. But against Jim, it just wasn't quite enough. Yeah. Well, and that, this that is key going... fail on the final piece to, to wall up in front also was uh, was massive there. This is going to put a ton of pressure now on Andy if he wants to get a draw. I mean, right now his his options are win the game or lose the game more so than draw. I think. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I mean, again, it, it's it's not impossible to see ten elves wall up in front of these dwarf this dwarf drive, but um, yeah, you know, I was going to say a good kickoff result that didn't happen or a misfield. Uh, could yep. he, you know, easily put the elves way back into this. But at some point, you know, if something fails for Jim, Andy's going to have to make the decision of if he goes careening at the ball or if he just stays back safely. Yep. And that'll tell you a lot about, you know, like a one and nine pick up there. What does he do? Does he just go after the ball? He has to. Interestingly, Jim did swap the blitzers for the, uh, the beards on each yep. edge. Yep. Uh, which I do think strengthened this anti blitz defense. Oh, yeah, uh, absolutely. I, I think that's better. <clears throat> it leaves the only weak point as the runner and the slayer in the middle. And if you really wanted to, you could replace the second runner with a beard, and that would really lock it up. But that does make you less responsive, less able to do those handoff plays to create secondary scoring options when you need them. 
It was impressive, Arietti. <laughs> Very impressive. I did not think that was coming uh, after <laughs> after the last the, the last couple turns. Oh, and there's a KO. That's all he needs. Yeah, just any any elf not on the pitch is a, a decent elf here. Even a stunned elf that allows him the movement he wants is, uh, is extremely useful. A dwarf deck? I don't think so. <laughs> beautifully, it's put one of the line elves under such threat that I'm not sure we're going to see it doing anything at all. It yeah, will probably yeah, just stay gonna... down. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I mean, the other option is to try and knock this blitzer over and then three plus two plus out at the very end of the turn. The one thing it's not going to do is stand up where it is. Jim, hey, maybe he does stand it up and try and tempt Jim into surfing it with half his team. I mean, that might work on Davo. Famously <laughs> likes to surf. But... Yeah, yeah, it rolls reverse, maybe. <laughs> so here we are, some classic elf chevron walling. With the cheeky no, little diagonal kill. focus on it, which is nice. No, this is uh, playing for the draw is fine here. I don't know. I, I forget if there's a... Do you know if there's a tournament at the end? Or is it just... Uh, uh, the the is it top just the four record? teams, I think, go into semifinals and then finals. That makes sense, yeah. Okay. Uh, which I've suggested might be an idea with only four coaches to try and um, schedule to happen all at once. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Just two games back to back, isn't it? Yeah. Again, Certainly again, ain't no SFL where it takes four months to schedule a game sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> we like to play it nice and slow in my leagues. No, I'm due to get humiliated by Mr. Page uh, tomorrow evening. What's he playing? 10 p.m., which I think is UTC. Um... He's playing dwarves, but with a death uh, roller. Oh right, and you're playing this build, right? Yeah, you I'm the playing same this build. build. You ripped off Jim's build, right? Uh, <laughs> some people might say that's great. Some people I, just did. <laughs> I'm not prepared to buy that as a theory. Let's. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> that's fair. That seems reasonable. Uh, Jimmy earlier talking about how uh, for the next Blitz Pit he's entering his favorite build from the BBSL. Uh, I think showing who quite enjoys being influenced by the builds of others. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't think we've once ever seen Jim just go to fumble, type in a good player's name, and use their exact build and uh, level up tracks. <laughs> Never once has he done something like that. Um, look, no one owns any build. Uh, I have said many times that I invented inventing things that other people had already invented. <laughs> And also that I invented caging. Which is um, funny because there's an old streamer who used to say the exact same thing about inventing things. So I think he invented what you invented that other people invent. <laughs> oh, God, my brain's going to break. <laughs> yes, bearing in mind Blood Bowl has been around for 40 years nearly. <laughs> oh, good Lord. <laughs> I think it was 86, so that's 35, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Uh, you know, Fumble as a website has been playing... Blood Bowl online for 19 years. Uh, 18, no, sorry, 18 and a half years now. And obviously before Blood Bowl 2, we had Blood Bowl 1. I know some people think Blood Bowl 2 invented Blood Bowl. Um, the clue there is in the word, the letter 2, uh, that even just for cyanide, Blood Bowl 2 did not invent Blood Bowl. Most, most of us are older than Blood Bowl, Galcia. <laughs> Well, not maybe not most of us, but those of us right, that matter. Two. Come on, I'm making words up as I go here. When Skuro does that, everyone just laughs along. Yeah, yeah, but that's the thing. So here's the difference, though. You've got that. You've got that British accent. Everyone expects you to say intelligent, well-mannered, well-meaning things. I just let it ride. You know, it's just word diarrhea, and they're like, "Yep, there's the American just saying shit that doesn't matter because he can." <laughs> I'm not a, I'm not a, a fucking children's toy that you pull the string of. Thank you very much, humorous chimp. I will not just speak on command. I'm not a dog. I'm a human being. A human being person. Yes, I think that's probably true. People expect things of me and have very low expectations of you. 
That's why all the bad guys in movies have British accents. Because they just sound more, you know, proper and conniving and threatening. All the good guys have American accents. It has nothing to do with the fact that the Americans made the movies. Mm. <laughs> and that nowadays brown villains are seen as a little bit toxic. <laughs> yeah, yes. Well, if I say it, PB will probably give Jim like a thousand dollars, so I'm still not gonna do it. <laughs> boy howdy. Yeah, it doesn't work when you do it. You gotta be more like boy howdy, fuck damn it. <laughs> boy howdy, <laughs> Ehaw, we're getting some <laughs> ratty blood bowling here today. Ah, you guys, you got me. <laughs> Yeah, no one, no one in the world has ever been intimidated by an American. <laughs> Said no one in a history book ever. <laughs> With their reputation of being such hospitable and kindly people to the other peoples of the world. Yeah, 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 yeah. We definitely have great foreign policies. Anyway, we don't need to. No, let's move on. <laughs> Folks, I think we're gearing up for the 2-1 grind. Just a, just, a, just a guess out of the commentary here. Yes, anyone that can get away with the line and cancel Christmas deserves all of our respect as a villain. <laughs> Absolutely. So, and it's very interesting for Andy. He would love to just be walling up here and uh, and holding out for the nil, the one one. Um, that's not really an option for him. The dwarves are going to keep relentlessly grinding forward. Jimmy's going to try oh, and steal Oh, another two plus dodge turn. fail. Yeah. Removal. Into another removal. This is now yeah. getting the almost critical elf for the dark elves. Yeah. Eight yeah. is really not enough to hold all the way across the field. A lot of elves under threat. That's exactly what I was talking about with some of the basing. It has to be done intelligently. Absolutely. If you pull those early fails, and that was a fairly early fail, and he has left himself three exposed elves. Add the blitz for a fourth, with only el elves on the pitch and one of them on the ground already. That's a, not a lot of elves stood up. Well, I will. I will say this though: one of the greatest things about Res format is that Davo has no incentive not to do a dive to try and nope. save the game. Yep. So that should be uh, that should be coming. And it's just a matter of at what point does he assume the game has ended uh, if he doesn't get some miracle dice. Yeah, absolutely. You can break all of your elves, and it just doesn't matter. They they all come back. <laughs> like the villains in some of those Hollywood movies you like, Skuro. Oh, uh, yeah. That's me. Now, there's two ways of doing this. We can either stand up and advance, which is what he's doing. Use the Blitzer to hit and recover the other dwarf. Yeah. Or you hit with the dwarf and then dodge the Blitzer off on a three. This is definitely safer. Gets the removal with it. He's gonna love that. Yeah, this is uh, this is, this is Davo is running out of players here. He's not yeah. even gonna have a, a a reasonable cage dive at this rate. No, no. I mean, Jimmy's made sure he's got guards diagonally across the ball there, so any cage dive is still two dice uphill. Uh, you can dive in, obviously, not that difficult off either the slayer or the runner. It's about a fifty percent chance to get there, but then you're facing two reds when you do. <laughs> yeah, Johnny. Yeah, Dio. <laughs> I was, uh, I was, uh, I, I had like 70, 30 odds on it. Uh, maybe not outlasting this game. We'll see. But uh, I, no, I scheduled mine for after this. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just, just in case. But hey, you know, both of these coaches have clearly come in with a game plan that they've been yep. trying to get. They've been playing properly. It seems like, you know, you know, the Blood Bowl Super League brings out the best in all of us. I've got to say, this is giving me a lot of concern, this, because uh, Davo's not going to get this unlucky against Dwarves twice, I'd have thought. Yeah, well, he's going to have to do it like four times, isn't he? <laughs> like four yeah, times. exactly. I'm hoping he completely monsters Mr. Page. Uh, and, <laughs> and also turns the Chaos Dwarves over, so that he's due another one like this. This has not yep. been good dice for the Dark Elves. Plenty of times you see, you know, six two pluses in a turn all work, and then a huge wall of Dark Elves with nothing under threat in front of you as the Dwarves, and really few options. Right now, I think all of us can look at this and see this is massive advantage, Jimmy. There's a really good chance he can drive this home over the next four turns. Does need to make some progress. Um, I thought there was a rowdier position to take this turn, but he's still being quite careful with it. Yeah. That's pretty classic, Jim, though. You know, he just doesn't... He doesn't want to be the... Re <laughs> he doesn't want to throw the game away. No, no. Being 
slightly rowdy, you know. And again, you know, Davo has to be a little careful here too because, like, in theory, he's got a one-turn shot if his KOs wake up. You yep. know, there could he can still try and get the riot. You know, I mean, try to get the riot. Hope for the riot. Yep. Um, so the game isn't over when the two-one comes in. But it is if he doesn't have a team left. And that was a so, very sexy angle from Jimmy there, giving himself yeah. six dice on that, which uh, still obviously didn't get the her. first two were without tackle, but still, you know, looking for a power on four dice is not terrible. And then leaving two more with tackle, still didn't get it. Again, putting a lot of threat on some of the downed Dark Elves. Just taking his position, knowing that the Dark Elves are very short of numbers to wall up. But there is th three of them that are... You know, able to move here without too many problems. He can knock the mighty blow over and then get another hit as well, freeing another Dark Elf. Still a reasonable chance of these very few Dark Elves being able to just get in front of this and stop it, maybe. I say, I maybe, think that's asking still a lot very of this few team. Of them. <laughs> I yeah, think there's it's still very a lot. few of them. But uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, what else is he going to do, you know? Yeah, that's the assist position I thought we'd see. Problem here is, of course, it does leave the flank very exposed. And there's a runner just to, on the blitzer that... Okay. With, wow. Two and one. Wow, yeah. Gets the pow, though. I think this Witch Elf is going to be off the pitch. I don't think we've got the time to do it. Uh, oh, I guess that's well, three turns. Yeah, you're yeah. probably right. I yeah, mean, you're right. It's, it's possible, and it would give him a lovely advantage, but I mean, the, the stun there particularly is huge for Davo. Um, he's going to be pleased to see that. That's the first bit of real joy he's had. Yeah. Yeah. And taking another beard out of this fight. So with the down beard, the slightly irrelevant blitzer, the one he's just marked, the one that stood up, and the stun. He's thinking about it. Jimmy's not got a lot of options. He's hovering over. No, he's taking he really the is. he's taking the tackle. Yep, he's taking the tackle. Probably the right call. Yeah, prioritizing space and moving this ball forwards, which yeah. certainly that's what I would do. Uh, Dionysian yeah. probably tearing his hair out. <laughs> saying there's absolutely no need to move forwards with two turns left after this. I just think I think the one way Davo can stop this score is if he doesn't advance this turn and has to roll all the dice on on the last two turns, you know? Like that's like the classic way yeah, Jim yeah. loses the game is he'll yep. just snake when he's trying to get into scoring position on turn yeah, absolutely six, or fifteen. I mean, famously I famously, I mean I you know, people that know my style would say I, I try and advance at every given opportunity and I absolutely yeah. do. Uh, particularly with dwarves, any space I can take is a space I don't have to fight for next turn. Speaking of, three rerolls, three turns. Yeah, no, no you've problems. got to pile them in. Ooh, foul coming here on the witch. I respect that. Prevents a uh, runner surf and then a witch surf, I suppose. I think it's as much about trying to stop the one turn. Yeah. You know, if you could chip yeah, that with the, with the apo yeah. gone, you know, one frenzy witch is bad, two. That one turn becomes, well, not easy, as you said. He needs the KOs back to really make that work. But it's certainly easier with two Frenzy than one. So what do you got? You got a two and a half elf columns here? <laughs> not much else? Yeah. I mean, though, because we're so pushed to the side, that might sort of be close to nearly enough. Maybe. Uh, not really. No, because he can still go. I mean, he's still got another turn. But Davo's got two rerolls, so he can certainly pump one into this turn if he feels that's going to put him in a position to really stop this drive. No, he just yeah. fails his first two plus. Oh, <laughs> he snakes yeah, it. Yeah, that's not. Yeah. The, he's not had the luck on those those dodges. No. And yep, again, you know, that's why that blitzer advanced. Put these elves under as much threat yeah. as you possibly can, and just hope that you can either pull the reroll or the fail. And that has happened for Jimmy. Yeah, absolutely. So maybe a cage yeah. dive coming here. Jim can probably close off. Well, he doesn't really have the movement. Yeah, this but... is this is going to be fine. There's going to be enough guard on every corner yeah. of this. It's really going to come down to uh, the final kickoff of the game. It's yeah, if, I mean, uh... Abo can definitely get in. The question is, what the hell do you do once you're in? You need two <laughs> yeah. powers. Yeah. You need two powers on red dice. That's not impossible, trust me. I've seen it a load of times in my tabletop gaming. Sure. It seems to happen about 50%, but I'm reassured that isn't actually the odds of it. 
Yeah, exactly, Rick. There's still Absolutely, a shot. Absolutely, Rick. But still remember, a it's a minute to set it up and then only a yeah. minute to execute it. That's very, very tight. That is asking yeah, a needs, load. He needs, to, and he's probably a little stressed out and probably a little tired and probably a little pissed off. So all those things make it really fucking hard to one turn. Yeah, his dice have not been what he would have wanted here. Of course, there is the riot as well. <laughs> all right, well. I, I, there's no reason to not cage dive here. I, I don't think nope, it's a big enough risk. It's a five plus in, which with a yep. re-roll, you know, the dodge re-roll, you come in off the runner, obviously. Yeah. Um, which is your natural wrestle. angle anyway. Do it with the wrestle, which then there's uh, three dice on each of those two die that come up nicely for you. It makes it about a one in four. But he doesn't have a re-roll to pump into it if he wants to save one for his one turn. Yeah, he's And it does expose that. a witch, AV7, to either getting hit back, though the mighty blow isn't up there to do it, or to chipping itself on a failed dodge. Or, of course, on a both down. Or a natural skull. And if you get the push, it's then... Uh, ooh. I mean, unless... Yeah, I think you try and cancel this runner first so that the, the push is still two red dice. So if this block works, he can cancel that runner and then come in with the witch. Yep. And here we go. In yep. no problems. <laughs> Double skulls can't re-roll it. Can't re-roll that. Oof. I mean, it's 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 brutal. Andy's not had the luck for sure this game. Oh my goodness! Oh! Andy puts his nuts on the table for that one. Gets Ooh, wow. the double pass. Oh, oh, I respect that the entirely. Floor. Now he's Could got the to try and get in and muddy this picture. He can push another dwarf onto that ball, give it another <laughs> bounce into a worse spot. As long as this witch makes it a uh, one in thirty-six dodge, which it does. She does. He does put that assist in. Oh, could this get a lot worse for... Could no. get worse for either here. But <laughs> I, I, I respect the bounce. Oh, he's going to hate that. That's brutal for Andy. <laughs> oh, 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 dirtiest of Dinos right there. Well, I told you those two red pounds just come all the damn time when elves attack the ball carrier, yeah. even with block. And yet, in the end, that final gamble... Really not paying off for Andy Davo there. He doesn't even take a GFI, and he's in with the score. Andy still has his one turn, but no reroll for it now. You still like those odds. You know, I didn't like the reroll at the time, but the way it all played out, obviously you're okay with it. That second scatter was a disaster, though. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's see a one-minute, one-turn by Andy Davo. It's very much the standard NAF defense that uh, that Jim's pushing in here. Boy, howdy. <laughs> Boy, howdy. <laughs> Boy, howdy. <laughs> that two reds was rowdy. Hell of a game by both coaches. Uh, Davo's got to feel a little hard done at the end. There. <laughs> yeah, it definitely got a better dice, didn't it? Definitely got a better dice. But, yeah, um, but that's blood bowl. Someone's going to. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, it's yeah, refreshing absolutely. to break armor sometimes and then roll some ones. You know, that's nice, isn't it? Yeah. yeah his, his two plus dodging off really wasn't on point today. Yeah. Uh, that that being said, let's uh, let's not celebrate just yet. This game is no. not over. No, it's not. We, it's we not over. gave you plenty of mad props for the fact that you were putting the you know the right elves under threat and uh, keeping the ball nice and safe at the same time. <laughs> okay, now the game is ball. over. <laughs> yeah, we're done here. <laughs> is it? I wouldn't be surprised to mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Oh shit! Like I literally don't know. Just stopping where you are, then, Jim, is an option. It is, yep. yeah, but I don't, I don't want to do that, do I? <laughs> like, the fact it's a 1D on the Witch Elf, like, presumably he's going to try and... Oh, okay, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and here you have it, folks. Jim created this league so he could put on the dice mods for administrators so he could finally beat Andy <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> and yet. <laughs> oh, right. I don't. I really don't know what I'm doing. 
Oh, I play on Whew. Oh, no. <laughs> well, I, 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 I don't want to do it. But anyway, um, yeah, God, I really fucked up the turn 15, didn't I? Oh, man. I put, first of all, I made the cage too far to the side so that I couldn't, you know, so I, I had to put the runner there so that he had yeah. the uh, he had the dodge on the... 50% dodge in. Yeah, that was horrible. And then also I bloody messed up the blitz to, to you know, have to do the GFIs. Cause I, I didn't realise that I was going to push him into the cage corner until too late, and so I was like, oh, fuck. So, yeah, I really, I really ballsed up that but never mind i mean as it happened he rolled a five on the dodge in anyway so it wouldn't have mattered that much i guess um had i done it correctly but yeah, yeah well jim make, think of it this way though if you close the league at this very moment you'd be on top undefeated <laughs> with your only win over andy Dave. just something to consider <laughs> it's not it wouldn't be my only win over on Dave at all but yes no, no I meant in the league. Though. Oh, yeah, right. My only way. Right, yeah. yeah. And uh, amusingly, for all lovers of Great Blood Bowl, there's a very good chance that in round two of the Chalice, we see Jimmy's High Elves take on Andy Davo's Kill Chaos team. I don't know about very good. good. I, I imagine that I'll lose my first round, but thank you very much, PC, for saying that. <laughs> if we do get to see that, that's going to be one for the ages, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's a good you point. You've both got Coffee, all the tools uh, to destroy the other. I think that could be hilarious and wonderful yeah. blood bowl. Yeah, yeah, it could be good. And uh, but, yeah, very good point there by Coffee. Oh God, when he when he just did all of the dodge around the sound around the side, yeah. like for fuck's sake! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I couldn't believe that. Blitz was a little and, scary. You got very least... lucky. You got the three and eight. The three and eight for the. Uh... For the uh, ball going out of bounds there. If it hadn't, you were in some serious shit. Yes, yes, of course that would have been that would have been horrendous if there'd been no touchback. So yeah, I mean, obviously he got super lucky to get the blitz and make all of the rolls in the blitz. But yeah, that yes. was that was huge. The obviously the uh, the uh, <laughs> the touchback. Yes, but from the state he blitz. got it to that three and eight was crucial. Yes, yeah, I mean that and was allowed you to stabilize. Much, yeah, it was pretty much GG if uh, if uh, if it wasn't a touchback there. I think. It would have had to be like a long bomb or something from like there's literally no other play than the long bomb from the from the oh. runner I guess, which was yep. a horrible place to be. But that was oh, maybe it's a long pass if I was lucky. But, um, but no, I you do like your anti blitz setup. Uh, not not even putting on too many the on the line of scrimmage dark elves, but uh, yes, the the blitzers swapped slightly more inside. A tackle on the outside obviously made it stronger. <laughs> Di Dio's concession win slightly stronger than Jimmy. Yeah, yeah, tragic, tragic that not even top of the league with the only person to have played and won. But never mind. <laughs> that was... Blood Bowl Super League. It's for the fans. Yeah, it was pretty cool, wasn't it? I was. I mean, I was really happy. I was pretty. I was really trying hard there. I was pretty happy. You know, obviously a few mistakes, but you're going to get a few mistakes with one minute turns, aren't you? The biggest yeah, mistake a couple of was not ordering things. Was all I really didn't like. Other than that, I thought. Uh, I thought almost every turn, both of your plans were the sort of things I'd have been trying to do. I thought it was some great blood bomb. I legitimately forgot it was one minute turns until about like halfway through the first half. I think. <laughs> yeah. There was one turn in particular where. I, I wanted to hit the witch with a with a lineman, uh, no, the runner, you know, the blockless runner. And yeah. then I thought, if I just power the witch, then I can blitz with a troll slayer. And then you know, so then I, and I thought, well, if I push her, then I can blitz with the other with the other long beard. That's like so we wouldn't have to GFI. So like I was thinking of all these things, but then all the double skulls. So like that instantly made me just then have to be really really boring and <laughs> so that looked that looked an odd turn from the ordering but i did have ideas um the other things i no doubt i messed up because it's it's hard yeah i mean there was just a turn thing. where a, a troll slayer could have stood up at the start and stood up at the end and the cage you know you closed it at the end where it could have been closed a tiny bit earlier but it was all fine yeah yeah i was trying to be i was trying to be greedy that turn yeah i was i was trying yeah. i was going to try and fish for a power yeah um, who's Jim's next opponent? That's a good question that I can answer um, right now. Uh, do we know the future as well as the present? I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, next next up is a win against the Division Two Concede champs. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> and then stream that one. Oh, yeah. you definitely go two nil nil then. Uh, yeah. I think PC, you'll struggle you... to fuck that one up. <laughs> you wanna you wanna commentate that one with me while we watch the Concede come in? <laughs> I'm just trying to work out who I'm against next. That. Uh... Yeah. No, hang on. What's that? 
where did Dead Toes go? That's uh, that's uh, that's Dio that three. I've got next week. Yeah. So like, next week I don't have a match, and then the, my next game is versus Dio. Okay. So in week three I get the concession. In week two, week two. Ah, Jed, I love that. Well, first of all, I've got to play Mr. Page, which is scheduled to be tomorrow night. In Arian, you've got second. <laughs> and then I've got those evil, evil little things next. Wow. Well, oh, it, I think oh, it's, it's in Arian versus Calcium tonight. Let's have a yeah, he said he said 11 p.m. I think tonight oh, your that's time. Cool. That's Super cool. cool. I'm I'm excited to see Inarian's uh, flings in this uh, in this competition. Inarian yeah. flings are de genuinely terrifying. I, I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I watch yeah. his CCL runs a lot late at night because uh, he, he streams like at like my bedtime, and uh, it's a lot of it's a lot of fun to watch. It really is. Oh, it's, it's it's a horrific build. I mean, he's channeled a little bit of the energy I put into my goblin build. You know, putting some doubles in places you just don't actually want to see them. Um, yeah, I mean, against dwarves, obviously you've got to think you go in slight favorite, but there's Zara on top of all of that nastiness, isn't there? It's not Zara. It's a uh, Puggy and a Chef. Oh, Pug Puggy and Chef, right? Puggy, yeah, Puggy's awful. the man. I think that's mm. better for us. Um, yeah, I think it probably is. Yeah, I mean the odds of losing all three rerolls yeah. are pretty, pretty terrible. Um, yeah. Although if it happens, that's a tough half. Yeah. Um, and of course, flings just you know knock you over with a tree and then kick you in the face with a halfling. And uh, obviously, plenty of dirty players there to do exactly that. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, the, yeah, this build is going to it's going to be better against someone worse against others, isn't it? With the, the chef and puggy versus Zara, but. Uh, It'll be de very interesting. I, I, honestly, I think he can do very well. In it, like it sounds stupid because it's because uh, it's halflings. But then Rick qualified for Blitz Pit with Augers, <laughs> so anything's possible, isn't it? You know? And it's also halflings in a group of three dwarves and a chorf team. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the other thing to add at the back end of that. <laughs> it's it. You know, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not completely on the uh, on the on the halfling train, but I think it will definitely nope. surprise people. I, I, there's no I'm with shame you, Jimmy. At all I think Mr. Page will finish top with his roller dwarfs. I think the <laughs> the dwarf teams and the chorf team are going to struggle to have an answer to that. And I think the flings are probably a good pick for second, aren't they? Yeah, maybe, maybe. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of ogre runs, Jim, uh, you got 164 people watching. Well, I'm going to end the YouTube video first, Skuro. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone. Thank you very much, Skuro and PC. And uh, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.